Welcome to the Etymology of Number course elective. I'm very excited to present this to you and uh, very excited to take you along the journey that I've been on over the last several years as I've started to notice um, all the things that build up life and all of the atomic resonances and everything that basically puts together our universe is falling right into a beautiful pattern. And that numbered and beautiful pattern is symmetric. It is uh, fantastic. It is easy to understand. And I'd like to uh, share that with you. So I'm very thankful to the Residence Academy and the foundation for allowing me to, uh, to have this course elective. And, and this is really a, an extension of the first lesson that I taught on this in Egypt uh, on the trip that we had there about three months ago. And we had such a response to it that I uh, was asked if I'd be willing to, uh, to show this work to a larger audience and people that wanted to be able to access it online. So I'm very excited to be able to do this with you. Um, also, basically the etymology of number is a four part lecture series that examines the discovery and evolution of human understanding regarding numbers. And this includes chemistry and biology and photonics and gravity and music and art and time observation, even psychology and our general awareness. This very new course uh, is basically being presented here only the second time. And this series builds upon a history and secular teaching of philosophers and polymaths from antiquity to today. Uh, both equally scientists as well as musicians and mathematicians and psychologists and uh, architects and, and artists. And we're gonna examine the works of the likes of Pythagoras, as well as Descartes and Newton, Einstein, uh, Euler, uh, as well as many others, including Russell and Carl Jung. Um, and we're also going to investigate the role that numbers have played through human history, uh, through our psyche, as well as in terms of observation, awareness, and self-actualization. Now, I am not a physicist, so I'll be very clear to point this out to you. Not to say that I don't know a little bit about physics, as I, I definitely do. But I have been a businessman my entire career, and luckily I've been a successful businessman. I was formerly the president of Allergan Medical, uh, which is a global multi-billion dollar corporation in the pharmaceutical field. Uh, I was also formerly CEO of Bausch & Lomb Surgical, and uh, have run multinational organizations all around the world. And I have hired people and had tens of thousands of employees, of employees reporting into me over several years, but about six years ago, I decided I wanted to do something different. And I was tired of, of being the pharma, pharmaceutical executive CEO. Um, and I, I definitely wanted to have a bigger impact on the world. And I hope that the last half of my life would be impactful to the world in profound ways, that I could help bring new things to light or to help, you know, face and confront some of the big challenges the world faces related to scarcity and fear. And um, I gave a TED talk on beautiful minds are free from fear. And uh, you can find that on uh, the TED website. And that's been a fabulous experience for me and a way for me to kind of give back uh, what I have learned along my life journey. And this is really an extension of that same effort. I am also a linguist and I have uh, lived in nine countries and I speak eight languages fluently. So Whenever you have a new original thought in your mind, you literally have a new brain. Your brain changes every time you have a new original thought. You have new synapses that basically take place, and particularly when you can merge two sides of your brain into one, so that you have one holistic thought process that can emanate from the center of your mind, engaging both the right and the left sides of your brain in ways that allow you to think with higher awareness, and to see problems and solve problems in ways, just like Einstein put, it's impossible to solve problems when you use the same line of thinking to solve the problem that has created the problem. But to actually utilize a new line of thinking that balances both the left and right aspects, the male and female aspects, actually is where all the great discoveries have come out from all the polymaths, including all those folks that I just mentioned. So I'm very excited about this, this new course. Uh, we're going to be delving into the mystery of constants. We're going to the mathematical constants and the physics constants. We're going to demystify and put it in the layman's terms for you so that you can understand. I think you're going to find that through this course curriculum, you're going to be able to learn math in a wholly different way. In fact, your relationship with math will very radically change. Mine has. 
uh, while I was always pretty good in math and I was always pretty good in music, I never was able to really gain a relationship with mathematics or numbers. And now I realize that there's a language embedded in it. So what's the first thing you can do when you can speak a language with another party? And we can try to assume who the other party might be in this case, the universe. Then you can start to build a relationship when you start to understand and speak the same language. I was speaking with a friend of mine who is a, a very notable uh, CEO here in Orange County, California. And his son is five years old and he's uh, severely autistic. And he said to me just now, as I was meeting with him about an hour ago, that the one thing he would like to do, because he sold his company very successfully to, uh, to a very large conglomerate, Verizon. And he said, you know, what I really want to be able to do is speak with my son. I want to be able to, to connect with my son and communicate with my son. And I, I, my heart really went out to him. And I think many of us want to be able to connect with our universe. Many of us want to be able to connect with the larger aspect of what, you know, why we're here, answer the bigger questions, and maybe have a, a deeper understanding of our role in this universe. So the mathematical constants have been there, but have been, nameless, faceless kind of numerical expressions to me that meant nothing, but now they've, in a way, kind of become my friends because I can understand the language that they're speaking. We're gonna take you through those numbers like pi and phi and alpha and Euler number and euler Masseroni constants and gravity and the forces behind those and help you to understand it in an intimate way in a way that's also gonna be fun and interesting for you. We're also going to explore the role of those constants in planetary motion and distance, distance radii, a lot of the stuff that you would study in physics, but you're going to look at it from the context of it's not just one note on the page, but rather it's a whole beautiful orchestral symphony that is playing an opus for us all around us every day. And the, the way that this language comes together so easily and so clearly makes it so irrevocably compelling. Also, we're going to be looking at presentation of light and how light and electromagnetism actually work together. Now, I happen to have many patents in electromagnetism and laser technology and photonics because that's been the industry and part that I've been working in over the last 25 years. But when you recognize that light speed itself is really just related to both the Euler number and pi and how those interrelate in a very simplistic constant that is spoken in this language of light, I think you'll find that this is going to be able to illustrate for us and illuminate the multivariate phenomenon that we're experiencing every day in our day-to-day -day lives, which includes rhythmic balance interchange, polarity, complementarity, non-locality, and duality. The third lecture in the series is called The Language of Light, and this is really where you're going to see this whole course series gets really exciting because you'll start to learn the language where numbers represent the alphabet, where the mathematical constants themselves become the verbs of action and circles and geometry organize the syntactical communication of this language. And uh, I, I got to tell you that this is something that has been a long and, and challenging process for me to, to get my mind to a place where I was able to see these connections and, and be able to pull them together for you in a way that's going to be easy to understand and also very compelling. This language represents electromagnetism. And this is going to be everything that becomes the basis for our moment-by-moment -moment observations and everyday experiences, as well as understanding the twin opposing reactions of vibratory electromagnetism and its impact on radiation and its equal opposite pairing, which is gravitation. Radiation, its mirrored opposite, gravitation, and its implications on spin and angular momentum are all gonna be things that we touch upon in this lecture series as well, understanding the forward arrow of time, dark matter, dark energy, and the newly emerging notions of backward time. I know it sounds interesting, um, and, I, and I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this. The fourth and final part of the lecture series is the mirror of consciousness. This is where we tie in Carl Jung's work in particular of awareness and consciousness and studying of the shadow, the anima and the animus, and how all of this is tied back into this one singular language of light, and what we can glean from this for our day-to-day -day lives, how we can find happiness and overcome fear so that we can express our highest self. And we'll see that this is a consistent theme that travels all the way through all fields of expression in day-to-day -day life, 
not only in physics and chemistry and the periodic table of elements, but also in a unified theory, which encompasses physics, chemistry, math, psychology, music, art, and philosophy. So with that, I'm very excited that you're going to be attending this course with us. Uh, we'll be going on this journey together, a journey of discovery, a journey of, uh, of personal endeavor, and I can't emphasize to you how important it is that you have the right mindset going into this, the right intention as well. That your intention be that you build a deeper relationship with the universe around you and that you build a deeper understanding within your own awareness of the role that numbers and psychology and quantum physics alone, just like the double slit phenomenon, actually interplay and interact with each other. The entire universe is connected. We're all connected, just like the Sim says, by the space that connects us all. The space is the connection. And I think you're going to find that the numerical backdrop for the space is the language of light. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you soon.